Up here? Yeah. Okay. He is here. We saw him right now. Must be in the back. All right, so we'll get um, the multiple item speaker cards. As a first item, these are items where public speakers wish to speak on more than one item. Do we have public multiple? No, we don't have any? Okay. So we'll uh, move on from that item. Item number two, we will approve on consent unless there are any objections. Seeing no objections, uh, so ordered. Item number three, we will approve on consent. No objections, so ordered. Item number five, we will continue to 1030, 18, October 30th. Any objections? Seeing none, so ordered. Item number one, report from the Director of Planning, Vice Bertoni. Good afternoon, Council Members. Kevin Keller here for Vince Bertoni, Executive Officer of the Planning Department. Uh, just as part of our uh, quick uh, director's report today, just wanted to highlight some of the new plan, community plan updates we've been launching. Uh, we, this week, have launched our newest set of community plan updates. Really thankful to this committee and the council for the additional staffing and the budget to launch our updates. We launched the Southeast Valley Community Plans Update. Yesterday, we had our first kickoff for the North Hollywood Valley Village area. We had about 80 people attend the meeting. It was very lively. Uh, bustling even and was well received to start the dialogue with that community. Monday, October 22nd, we're meeting in th with Van Nuys North Sherman Oaks. Monday, October 29th, meeting at Sherman Oaks Studio City at the Studio City Branch Library. And of Wednesday, November 7th, we'll be at Toluca Lake Coenga Pass. So our planners are going out to the community, starting the three-year outreach and plan development process, working with uh, stakeholders. And again, this at this point in the game, we want to be listening, learning, and really responding to uh, some of the community feedback. So we're excited to see this program move forward and I'm available for any questions. Thank you, any questions? No questions. No questions. We will uh, thank you very much for that report and we will receive and file item number one. Item number four. Item four, Councilman, this is a report from the Planning Commission. It's a general plan amendment and a zone change for, and also an appeal relative to the site plan review filed by Charles Johnson. Okay, staff here on this item. Yes, staff is here on the item. Laura Frazen Steele, Department of City Planning. Staff is here and has submitted T conditions into the record to um, correct typographical error and also to denial, deny the appeal as filed by Mr. Johnson. Anything else? No. Okay, we'll go to public comment. Charles Johnson, Eric Bieberman. Good afternoon, my name is Eric Lieberman, I represent the applicant, and I just wanted to make myself available to answer questions uh, and to put on the record that we are uh, in agreement with the technical correction being presented by plan. Thank you. Hi, I'm Charles Johnson. Uh, good afternoon, all. I do not understand why we're here protesting this for two years after 99% of the people in the area do not want condominiums in that area. So if you, right now they have uh, 75, you want 75 dwellings on three and a third acres. The, par the property that's there now is approximately 40 acres there's 67 homes on that, 1,200% more homes going in there if you, if you approve this. Uh, I've talked to people in the, in the area. Can you hand me yeah. I've talked to people in the area that are buying homes and condominiums there, and they're three and, two and three bedroom homes. It's taken two to three families to buy one home. So 
if you have a two or three bedroom home, that's going to be two to three families, not just one. Okay? And then... Uh, This, the plan designates for that property has been designated to go zoned RE9, RS, and R1, and the, the TQRE9-1 would be appropriate for that. Um, there's a, the property uh, rezoned to RE9 as a transition between RA and the range of zones permitted in the land use designations in the adopted community plan. No property on the block, block face or across the street have been rezoned to a higher density. Further properties to the west next to the next one block west are zoned RS1. That's single family homes. There's a senior living apartment at the uh, on the right next to this property and it was put in without any anyone having any input on it so and it's not even a rezoned it's on ra property so it's a it's a big apartment house with uh, with all the new construction and condominiums apartment in the area there are a lot more automobiles and trucks on the street and there's surely an impact the neighborhood more than it did in 2016 when they took that study they the studies find that seniors are looking for smaller homes they're not looking for big homes they're looking to sell their homes and and go down uh, grade down to a smaller home and uh, so smaller homes would be much better. One, one, bed, or two, one to two bedroom homes in a, with one to two baths would be great for them where they sell their two story homes and, and want to move into that. So that would be a good alternative. And I think that uh, the goal of this is, your goal is a safe, secure, and high quality residential environment for all eco economic age and ethnic segments of the community. We believe this project will violate the pledge of keeping a safe and secure and high quality residential environment. Thank you. Thank you. Jill Akahoshi and Humberto Quintana. Um, actually, we were also wanting to see about uh, putting off a vote on, the, on this project until the files could be um, corrected in the case, because right now there are additional addresses that are attached to this file that the community doesn't understand why they were attached um, and added on after the fact, after the traffic study, after the environmental study were done. Um, these addresses, such as 15420 through 15450, have appeared on this case, and then they've been removed, and then they appear again, and they've been removed, and then we've been told that it's the that those addresses are remaining in the file until January of 2019 as an open case. So what we'd like to do also is to uh, get a continuance until the entire. Um, matter could be straightened out because it's just too confusing to the residents and the residents are worried that there's a, a larger area involved. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Humberto Quintana. Good afternoon, Humberto Quintana, Planning Director with the Office of Councilman Monica Rodriguez. I am here to express the office's, the office's support of the project as it's currently proposed. We understand that the project has gone through several, several iterations that preceded the council time in office. We were made aware of the community concerns with the respect of uh, 
of the project, particularly as it pertains to parking and privacy issues. From a technical basis, the council office feels that the project before you does a better job of addressing these specific concerns of the community. As it relates to parking, the condo project provides a higher number of off-street parking than the previously proposed apartment project. Relative to privacy concerns, we work with the applicant to rearrange interior the interior floor plan so that the windows that were adjacent to the neighboring single-family residential development were of common area rooms. In addition, we worked with the applicants so that the app adjacent buildings to the single family residential development were reconfigured to remove in some instances the upper floors, creating a greater setback. Furthermore, landscape, the landscaping plan was enhanced along the southern property line to create greater screening. Moreover, the council office feels that this project promotes home ownership and brings attainable for sale housing that would ultimately be less impactful than what was previously proposed. However, we would like to add a new site plan condition relative to the fencing along the front yard setback, and I've submitted the language to the city clerk, and I'm requesting that in lieu of the six foot high stucco over CMU uh, wall at the Sepulveda Boulevard frontage, as shown on conceptual wall and fence plan exhibit A, page 39, that the applicant shall redesign the fence to provide variation in materials and texture to create a sense of privacy without diminishing the pedestrian environment or obscuring views. The fence shall be redesigned entirely with highly transparent materials, including decorative wrought iron, pickets, split rail, and shall be redesigned with combination of masonry, wall, stucco, and highly transparent materials. If metal is used, it shall not include spears or sharp points. The, fe the fence also should not be higher than three feet, six inches in height, and shall include individual gates at each entry. We ask that the planning department insert this condition into the site plan review conditions, and thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Um, for the staff, the, one of the commenters mentioned that there were some additional addresses uh, listed as part of the project. Is that accurate, or can you explain that? Laura Frazen, Steel City Planning. Yes, I'd be happy to address that. At one point, additional addresses were considered as ad areas. The city was looking at the possibility of um, doing a general plan amendment and zone change on properties to the north of the subject site. Those addresses were removed. They were not included in the um, case that was approved, that was um, recommended for approval by the commission on June 28th. There was an addendum to the environmental done and as part of that addendum, it was explained that the addresses were removed and I have been contacted by the community on more than one occasion and have explained that those addresses were removed. So at, at this point, um, in the most recent action, um, decided most recent, recent commission action, those, actions, those addresses are not included. And I hope that clarifies any confusion. So the record is clear that those addresses are not included. People just have to find the appropriate document where that's explained. Yes, and I would have, be happy to um, point them to that document. Yes, it's public record. It's on our website as well. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? No. So we'll move to deny the appeal and sustain the conditions of approval number 6 and 13 relative to the determination of the City Planning Commission in approving a site plan review <coughs> for the construction, use, and maintenance of 75-unit residential condominium project in 15 separate townhome style buildings for the property located at the said location. Uh -huh. With the changes to conditions recommended by Council District 7. And I think uh, the recommendations well, by Council District 7 have been submitted. The, yes. the amendments that the Council Office submitted, correct? Yes, yes, that's correct. Any objection to that motion? Seeing none, so ordered, thank you. Item number six. <clears throat> Item six and seven, Councilman, are interrelated. Item six relates to the appeal on the vesting track map for a 475 live, live work unit uh, project. And item seven uh, relates to the other entitlements, the vesting zone change and the height district change. There's two appeals from the track map and three appeals on the vesting zone change. Okay, staff here to present the item. Uh, 
Uh, good afternoon. Um, Sergio Ibarra planning staff at its meeting on June 14th, 2016, the Los Angeles City Planning Commission uh, recommended approval for a mixed use live work development comprising 475 live work dwelling units and approximately 125,000 square feet of commercial retail, uh, including 11% of the total units to be set aside for very low income households. Uh, the project was appealed and planning has uh, submitted a staff response report and is available for any questions. Any questions at this time? Okay, we will move now to public comment. The, the appellants for both um, six and seven, let's do appellants for number six first. Uh, Richard Drury from Laborers 300, are you here? Okay, what's your name? Sorry, one more time. Garrison is the last name. Uh, Noah Garrison. Okay, yes. gotcha. You, you have five minutes. Uh, that's fine. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, uh, committee members, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Noah Garrison. I'm here on behalf of the law firm of Lozoa Drury, uh, on behalf of Laborers International Union of North America, or LIUNA, uh, local union number 300, and its members living in the city of Los Angeles. LIUNA and its members are concerned that the EIR for the 520 Mateo project contains numerous errors and omissions that preclude accurate analysis of the project. Uh, as a result, the EIR both fails as an informational docket, uh, document and fails to impose all feasible mitigation measures to reduce the project's impacts as required under CEQA. Uh, we request that the city address these shortcomings and undertake a revised draft EIR and then recirculate the RDEIR prior to considering approvals for the project. Uh, first, the ER fails to analyze or to mitigate significant known toxic hazards at the site, including the presence of lead, arsenic, and PCBs found in soil samples at the site. Instead, the EIR calls for analysis to occur after approval of the project in violation of CEQA, and likewise illicitly defers mitigation measures which have to be set forth in the EIR. This will place construction workers, uh, such as the members of LIUNA, at the highest risk for possible exposure to such toxic soil contamination, as well as potential exposure for future residents of the project and neighboring residents. Second, the environmental consulting firm Soil Water Air Protection Enterprise, or SWAPE, found that the EIR fails to adequately evaluate and mitigate the project's air quality and greenhouse gas impacts. In particular, SWAPE found that the EIR consultant improperly manipulated the Cal EE mod, mod model used, to, uh, used for analysis and inaccurately reduced project emissions. SWAPE concluded that the project's construction NOx and its operational NX will both exceed South Coast Air Quality Management District CEQA significance thresholds uh, and therefore must be mitigated. Uh, SWAPE analysis also concluded that the project will connect, uh, create very significant cancer risks over 60 times above the 10 per million CEQA significance threshold, largely as a result of diesel particulate matter, uh, which is not properly analyzed or mitigated in the EIR. Uh, SWAPE further calculated that the project's greenhouse gas emissions will exceed the South Coast Air Quality Management District's screening threshold of 3,000 uh, metric uh, tons of, of carbon dioxide equivalent per year. Uh, the ER claims that because the project would have a less than significant GHG emissions, because it complies with a set of unenforceable policies and regulations, and therefore fails to provide substantial evidence to justify their use or to properly incorporate other feasible mitigation measures. Third, the EIR fails to accurately describe baseline traffic conditions. Uh, our traffic engineer, Daniel T. Smith, found that the EIR uses baseline conditions from as early as 2008, when the area was in the depths of the worst recession since the 1930s, and overall relies on a sort of a hodgepodge of traffic counts taken between 2008 and 2015, uh, factored then to estimate year 2016 by an assumed annual growth rate of 1% per year. Um, this 1% uh, uh, increase is not accurately um, uh, justified in the EIR, and additionally, traffic counts taken in 2008 and in closely subsequent years were likely significantly depressed by the recession, and the invented growth rate does not account for proper change. Uh, for all the foregoing reasons, uh, we request that the, the committee uh, uh, reject the proposal at this time uh, and request that staff create a revised draft EIR and circulate it prior to any approvals. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next appellant is uh, Christina Krop. Good afternoon, council members. I 
actually submitted a card on, on both items, but I'm fine um, just incorporating everything that we wrote in our letter and just taking the five minutes right now. Okay. Um, Christina Kropp, for the record, on behalf of appellants uh, Stephen and Carol Ann Warren, um, on behalf of, again, whom we submitted a letter to you that I hope you've taken a look at. Uh, our client's position is that the project as proposed is egregiously out of scale with the neighborhood surrounding it. Um, at the proposed height, it will match the tallest existing residential complex in the city of Los Angeles and is not compatible with the adjacent properties, which are two to four stories in height. We think it's telling that in order to accommodate the project, the applicant needs a general plan amendment and a zone change. The applicant needs to change the rules, but the rules, the code, and the general plan are all in place for a reason. They constitute the thought out, vetted, and adopted policies and regulations of the city. So to zone this parcel differently from every other parcel, simply for the purpose of accommodating this project, erodes the very existence of the zoning code and its protections. It makes a mockery of the time and careful planning completed for the very purpose of enacting the zoning code and its general plan. When the appellants, as well as other residents in this neighborhood, purchased their properties, they relied on the general plan and the zoning code protections. They re relied on the central city north community plan, which specifically offered as existing problems the fact that new multifamily residential projects were being proposed that are out of scale and incompatible with the character and existing neighborhood, and that the city was working to ensure that the scale, density, and character of buildings complemented surrounding uses. This project now asked the city to throw out all of these protections. The applicant was well aware of the zoning restrictions on this property when it purchased it, and he must be held accountable to them. It also needs to be pointed out that as part of the project, the applicant is seeking a zoning <coughs> administrator's adjustment for reduced parking, which is an incredible ask anywhere in the city today, but especially in this part of town. Even the Central City North Community Plan notes, as an existing condition plaguing the area, the lack of overall parking. To propose a project of this mass and scale, which exacerbates <coughs> the parking condition, is untenable. We also want to highlight the fact that the project currently before you today is not the project that was originally planned for this property. It is an alternate which was found in the environmental impact report for the originally proposed project. Accor accordingly, the alternative um, that was ultimately adopted by the city as the project and the project that is before you today from our perspective was not thoroughly and adequately assessed in the environmental impact report and I, I further elaborated on that in my letter. Um, accordingly, the environmental impact report um, fails as an inter informational document. One of the an environmental impact report's major functions is to ensure that all reasonable alternatives are thoroughly assessed. Here, the environmental impact report for the project analyzed uh, only uh, the only issues it analyzed, excuse me, is, is with regard to air quality, greenhouse gases, traffic, and noise. No analysis at all was provided for any other protected environmental category. Again, in addition to all the other uh, issues I raised in our correspondence on the CEQA issue, I would just like to highlight one more for you, and that is the fact that the EIR, taken as a whole, does not actually assess environmental impacts. Instead, it pushes almost all environmental analyses to the building permit processing stage. It requires a detailed geotechnical assessment, an emergency response and evac evacuation plan, stormwater pollution prevention and LID plan, assessment and analysis of whether there is sufficient capacity in the local and trunk lines to accommodate the project's wastewater flows, all of it <laughs> in the building permit stage. And again, um, we believe that is all against the CEQA mandates and the CEQA statute. And for these reasons, uh, we ask that the city grant our, our clients appeal and deny this project today. Thank you. And who are your clients again? Uh, the Warrens, Stephen and Carol Ann Warren. Okay. And they, they, okay, so they appealed both seven and, and just seven, right? I believe we're appellants on both. Six and seven. Six and seven. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. But again, I'm comfortable incorporating everything I said in my letter in the next item, so I don't need to speak again. Great. Thank you. Thank you. you. Our final appellant is Pearl Kahn from the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters. Are there carpenters here? Somebody representing them? Good, af 
afternoon, committee members. My name is Dan McDonald. I'm a representative with the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters. Okay. The Southwest Carpenters has submitted detailed written com comments outlining the issues with the EIR and the city's procedures to the Planning Commission and the City Council. So I'm not going to bore the committee with the uh, what we believe is errors in the EIR report. But what I will say is the Carpenters believes that this committee's responsibility is to weigh the environmental impacts of development versus the economic benefit. And we understand that there's a housing crisis in the city of Los Angeles, but if you have developers like Carmel Partners that doesn't consider labor standards as part of the economic benefit equation, if they're utilizing workers who cannot afford market rate housing, we believe that the housing crisis is not being properly addressed. So it is the belief and the request from the 50,000 members of the Southwest Carpenters that you do not approve this project until such time as that labor standards is factored into the equation of economic benefit versus environmental impact. Thank you for your time, committee members. Thank you. Um, now for the uh, applicant, Niels Cotter from CPV 520 Mattel. Did you sign up to speak, sir, or do you have a representative? Uh, I'll speak and then Andrew Fogg will also speak. Andrew Fogg, okay. okay. Five minutes? Sure. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Wiesar and Councilman. Thank you for the opportunity to present this project. My name is Niels Cotter and I oversee development in Southern California for Carmel Partners. I'd like to first thank the staff for all their work on this project and those here today in support of this great project. We first started this journey over four years ago. Uh, since that time, our project has evolved significantly through collaboration and partnership with the community. Here are some examples of the evolution. We learned how important a true act of Paseo was to those surrounding the project, so we spent the next two years acquiring the adjacent property approximately half an acre to create a dynamic paseo for the community with 20,000 square feet of retail, vibrant retail, and green space. Our project then evolved based on the importance of adaptable, high-quality building materials. So we shifted and chose to use type one concrete to help achieve this goal, which is a 50% uh, cost increase over a wood frame building. We were then asked by the community to push the mass off of Mateo and create a more slender massing. So we did that, creating more openness at the pedestrian level along Mateo. We also understood how the importance of a balanced, harmonious mix of uses uh, and how important that was to the community, uh, job-producing uses like office, retail, and live work. So we added over 100,000 square feet of office and reduced our live work component. The result is a truly unique project featuring unprecedented mix of uses on a two acre site in Los Angeles. Some other highlights we've achieved through listening, collaborating, high quality live work units with affordable housing focused on artists, high quality affordable commercial space for artists, an amazing paseo that creates 25% more open space than required, and meaningful and balanced components of live work, office, and retail. The result of this journey over the past four years is over 75 letters of support with a majority coming from the community living around the project and working around the project. Some of the examples of the support we've received over that time are unanimous support from HCNC, La Raba, ADCCLA, from condo and business owners who live and work at Barker Block and Molino, our direct neighbors like At Mateo and the Starkman Building and 405 Mateo, the ICA Museum, a myriad of local business owners, restaurateurs, long-time property owners, residents, employees, and artists. So finally, I'd like to thank all of those who helped guide us during this journey, and thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Uh, without further ado, I'll introduce uh, Andrew Fogg, who will um, continue this presentation. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Andrew Fogg of Cox Castle and Nicholson. Uh, as a preliminary matter, we'd like to thank the city staff for their hard work and careful analysis of this project. As Niels noted, the project's been developed in an open and collaborative process and has been guided by significant input from the community, particularly with regards for a taller, more slender building and substantial increase in permanent job-producing uses through the incorporation of substantial office uses. 
Also, the project's Paseo, which will reclaim and activate a currently blighted, abandoned former railroad spur, will provide much needed connectivity between Mateo and Santa Fe. As a preliminary matter, we'd like to call your attention uh, to a letter submitted by Brand Rosenheim on behalf of the uh, appellant or the applicant with some requested con corrections to the proposed conditions of approval. And we request that you direct staff to make corresponding changes to the findings. Members of our team can address any questions that you have regarding those requests. All of the issues that you heard today from the appellants were submitted in letters previously. Those have been responded to by staff and uh, and we've also submitted uh, substantive letters which explain how none of those issues have any merit and all should be rejected. There are a couple of issues though that we'd like to respond uh, here to. Um, first of all, there is a claim that this was not processed in accordance with the charter requirements for a general plan and zone change. This is just incorrect. The city's implementation of the charter has been upheld in numerous cases. Every case that's heard it most recently in the Westsiders case which upheld the Martin Cadillac approach, the same approach here. The city's findings are adequate and appropriate for both the general plan and rezoning actions. Also, the EIR is consistent with CEQA. Uh, the appellants contend that it is deficient and they're wrong in the facts and the law. The EIR fully analyzed all required topics and is supported by substantial evidence and their claims to the contrary should be rejected. With regard to hazardous materials, which they raised, this process will be a, there will be a phase two process after demolition when the site can actually be assessed and characterized, and that'll be fully mitigated. We thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. And, and before the uh, appellant moves on, um, uh, just for the record, before we get to public comment in general, you've submitted a letter from Rosenheim and Associates that outlines um, additional uh, changes. Um, to the conditions, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and they have to do with uh, the affordable housing component and the, which keeps, uh, has a commercial space, right? Yes, um, it would be, a, there's an affordable uh, for artists uh, commercial component. For okay, this. gotcha. All right, that's outlined in the letter, and what else? And uh, all the all public paseo, what, what is that? So the public paseo is a uh, is a space that uh, there's an existing railroad spur that is to the south of the property that was uh, that was acquired from the railroad and has been incorporated in the property to make a public uh, paseo and there were some minor changes with regard to being able to secure that site uh, during the evening so that uh, during the daytime and open hours when retail is open the public can pass through. However, at night. Uh, there are no active retail or other uses going on in that space. It could be secured for safety. Great, thank you. And um, with respect to your uh, portion of its commercial space for affordable, make it affordable to artists and local businesses, uh, I'd like to rec I'd like to ask if you're amenable to have um, if you could implement an affirmative marketing plan for artists and local businesses that includes designation of an identified outreach coordinator who will be responsible for ensuring that local businesses and artists are adequately recruited for these affordable commercial spaces and that the plan be submitted to the city prior to the start of leasing. Should we approve this program, would you be amenable to that? Uh, let me call up uh, Mr. Cotter for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I assume the answer was yes, but he informed me it is. Okay, and secondly, um, we had discussed um, that the applicant provide uh, two point Two five million to the CD14 Public Benefits Trust Fund, and that um, uh, would that be amenable also to the uh, applicant? Yes, it is. Okay, and that's for improvements uh, near or around the uh, the project, <laughs> correct? Yes, that's our okay. understanding. It'd be for public improvements okay. uh, right. as directed by the city. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we'll move on to public comment. Uh, Blair McPherson. Ian Medura. Hi, my name is Blair McPherson, and I am a business owner in the Arts District, and I've been there for five years. Um, I love being in the Arts District, uh, but the neighborhood is in dire need for new development in housing, office, and commercial amenities. 
um, that address the modern urban living and working needs. There's an increasing demand for all of these uses all over the city, but especially in the Arts District. And we support the 520 Mateo project that, because we believe that it's an example of positive, sustainable growth for the neighborhood in the area. Thank you. Thank you. Ian Madura, Phil Otto, Lauren Perry. How's it going? My name's Ian Madura, and I'm an owner-operator of a video production company in the local area. Um, essentially, when we first moved there, it was a, an interesting pill to swallow, seeing the almost abandoned streets. Um, and after seeing so much development, it's clear to see what the area is going through and where it's headed. So when Max and his team approached me with the proposal, it was very clear about how much time, energy, effort, care that they actually put into this project. And it's, it's revitalizing to see that energy is being put into this area that could potentially help you know, the entire area down the line. So we're full, in full support of everything, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Uh, my name is Philip Otto. I have a business here in the Arts District. Uh, we're in favor of the project. We uh, are, are in the uh, uh, I have a design firm. And when we hear things like the Paseo, we know that this is a, a person who's been very sensitive to uh, the life of the space and the neighborhood. Um, we appreciate the way they reached out and talked to people about uh, you know what would help them uh, uh, feel that this related to the community. So the sensitivity. Uh, has been noteworthy. Um, I'm very impressed with that, and we're in support of this project. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lauren Perry. I work in the Arts District. I'm in favor of this project because I think it will be a great addition to the community, especially because of the changes that they've made to the street level and pedestrian scale. I like to walk around the Arts District on my lunch break. Thank you. Thank you. Laura Velke, Gabriel Newmark, Ernesto Pantoja, Kelsey Fisher. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the HCNC today. Do I get a little extra time for that? Did you submit a, what's that thing called? Community impact report from your neighborhood council? We did. Is it on file? Should be. Mr. Chair, we don't have any community impact statement on file for these two council files. Okay, then. Otherwise, you would, but since you don't have, we don't have that on file, um, you have one minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, committee members. My name is Laura Velke. I represent the HCNC. I serve as the chair of the Land Use Committee for that organization. Um, by way of history, Carmel Partners has spent almost four years talking to the community attending multiple meetings, subcommittee meetings, really listening to what the community asked for. Um, back in 2015, we launched We Are the Arts District, which was our particular ordinance, asking for type one and type two construction in our neighborhood. Um, Carmel has, done, has gone above and beyond uh, the call of duty. They pushed the tower back to off of Mateo. They've added commercial space that will um, help small business owners work in the arts district that have been pushed out. Um, and with all due respect to our labor friends, we didn't see any of you, none of you, at any of the meetings complaining about these issues. Please give your full support to this project. It is supported by all the community leadership and most of the community. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Chair. Uh, chairman and committee members, my name is Gabrielle Newmark. I'm an Arts District resident, business owner, co-founded a local nonprofit, and also I'm the president of Los Angeles River Artists and Business Association. Um, I'm here to speak today to support the Carmel Project. Carmel came before our land use committee over three years ago and has been working closely with our community from the onset of their first rendition. We work and meet with many developers through our LUC, and I would commend Carmel for listening to the community goals and our specific needs and interpreting that into the best uh, possible design solution that, um, that addressed what the Arts District needed, programming, flex space, construction, and appropriate street-side sense of space. 
Uh, so specifically, they've addressed our open space needs with the public paseo, affordable artist housing units offset by office space in the tower, and will offer affordable commercial space to con continue having mom and pop shops uh, in the typical arts district businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Ernesto Pantoja, Kelsey Fisher, Yuval Bard Zammer. Good afternoon, Chairman Wezar, Honorable Council Members. My name is Ernesto Pantoja. I'm here on behalf of Sergio Rascon, Business Manager of Labor's Local 300. I just kind of want to echo what my brother, uh, Dan McDonald from The Carpenter said, but I want to go a little bit further. Projects come in and out of the city of Los Angeles where council members ask us to work with their residents, to bring them into the union to give them a career. There's no greater slap in the face when you have all these tower cranes here in downtown LA and our members have to drive outside of the city of Los Angeles to find decent work. Our members live Councilman Weezar's district, Councilman Price's district, Councilman Harris Dawson's district. Of our 4,000 that live in the city of Los Angeles, the other 4,000 in the rest of the county of Los Angeles in working class communities like these areas that are gonna be negatively impacted. Our people are going to be gentrified out. The least, the least that our council could do for us is make sure that our people are working on them. Just downstairs, you have the wife of one of our members that was an MS-13 gang member that we put into the, into the union is working at the cafe. So we ask you to please support and we did reach out to the developer, but we got nothing. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Kelsey Fisher. Um, I was fortunate enough to win a artist in residence program through KCRW and Flux Branding this past year uh, at the Olive Building on Olive. And during that time, fell in love with downtown and more specifically the Arts District. I was a part of the Rendon Art Show where we raised $24,000 in charity, which we gave to Inner City Arts. And we'll be curating my own show in January where we're bringing in uh, local and international artists to collaborate and also benefit a charity locally. Um, I'm in full support of this project. I've been speaking with Max and the members of this team in the project to get local artists involved as well as help the community in any way possible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, uh, Councilman Muizar, um, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Yuval Barzemer. I sit on the boards of the HCNC, La Raba, Arts District Community Council, uh, ADLA, the local bid, Friends of the Los Angeles River, and a few other local organizations. And in my spare time, I'm also a real estate developer. Um, I'm here to support the project. Uh, you heard all the other reasons about the collaboration with the community, the added value of uh, a high quality construction, flexible method that allows to adapt in the future, and the most important thing is the one and a half FAR. But what I want to draw your attention is to the massing and the overall FAR of uh, close to six to one. It's not without a little bit of a heartburn when we approve the first high rise in the neighborhood and what it means to the context of the neighborhood. I just want to say we are finally realizing the responsibility of using land in a productive way. Every time we do a type three construction, we are actually decapitating our ability Thank you. to grow. Thank you. Gustavo Occhiuso, Ian Wichnevsky, Todd Terrazas, Asuka Hisa. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Gustavo Cuso, owner of Green Committer. We were the first tenants at the Los Angeles Clean Tank Incubator, and we've seen the positive impact of that employment center in the Arts District firsthand. Uh, there's currently a waiting list at uh, LACI, and there's a clear need for additional office space in the Arts District. Uh, we also know firsthand uh, the problems of commuting to work. Uh, the best solution for that is to have a mixed-use property, such as the one that is being proposed, um, for commutes to be avoided altogether. Uh, having that mixed-use solution will improve air quality and mitigate traffic, among other benefits to the community. Uh, Green Commuter, as a zero-emission van pool and car share provider, will make its services available to tenants who need zero-emission mobility options for this project. Uh, we fully support the project since it will bring significant benefits to the art district and beyond. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, 
hello, my name is Ian Wisniewski. I'm a CFO and CEO of a company called EV Charging Solutions. That's part of the uh, Los Angeles Clinton Incubator Portfolio. I'm here to speak in support of 520 Mateo Project and Carmel Partners. I want to reiterate something that Commission Carolyn Close said, uh, that the project does a great job fitting into the neighborhood and that this is a forward-thinking uh, project that it supports life, live, and work housing. 11% of the units will be dedicated to uh, low-income affordable housing. Um, the project is going to result in less traffic. Uh, it's green energy focused. 20,000 uh, square feet of green community park space is going to be provided as a result of this project. This project creates new jobs and opportunity for small businesses. It provides tax revenue to the city. And what it does, it improves uh, the neighborhood and the community and attracts additional investment into the community. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman and Committee. My name is Todd Terrazas, and I've been living in Los Angeles for 31 years. Last four years, though, I've been here in the Arts District at the Barker Block, which is around the corner from this new project that I fully support. Being here, being on the, the ADCC, uh, the Art District Community Council, being part of La Raba's board for at least the last three years. Um, I've been very active in you know, working with organizations for a while, and there's never been a company like our Carmel that's been actually working with us hand in hand and gone, like everyone else has said before me, above and beyond to really make sure that this project really is beneficial to the community. Uh, with the new Paseo, which is an open land, which I always am very appreciative because I'm a dog owner, and although I can't wait to be able to walk through it, also being able to actually have affordable commercial real estate, which you know is really unheard of here in the community as, we, as you all probably already know. So I fully support this project, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Asuka Hisa, Michael Shieldstone, Max Zeff. Good afternoon, Chairman and members of the Plum Committee. My name is Asuka Hisa, and I represent the Institute of Contemporary Art Los Angeles, ICALA located in the Arts District, close to the project. Our institution is an art museum with internationally recognized exhibitions, special projects with artists, and a robust venue of outreach and education programs for all ages, particularly local school youth. We are supportive of the project and hope to see it evolve in the best way possible as we find Carmel partners to be good neighbors in their support for creating a culturally vibrant and inclusive community. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Michael Shillstone with Central City Association. We're here today to support 520 Mateo, which will bring a mix of housing, office, and retail and restaurant space to the Arts District. Carmel Partners has a track record of delivering high quality development projects that serve as neighborhood assets. This project, as with all of Carmel Partners' efforts, is rooted in a strong focus on community outreach and input. We think high-rise development makes sense at this site as well. It will help define the eastern edge of the Arts District and enable many people to live and work near incoming amenities and public investments like the 6th Street Viaduct, a revitalized LA River, and the 6th Street Metro Station. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Max F. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, I'm actually here uh, with a request to read a letter from our neighbor immediately to the south uh, at the Nate Starkman building. I thought it was important to hear what he had to say and he requested that I read this into the record. Uh, I thought it was important because we share a property line. Dear Chairperson Huizar, we have owned and managed the Nate Starkman building at 554, 544 Mateo Street adjacent to, Mateo, to 520 Mateo since 1983. At the time we purchased the property, the neighborhood had been abandoned by, the most, by most of its industrial users and an arts community was developing. We have maintained the building built in 1908 as close to its original condition as possible. Carmel Partners listened to our principal concerns about their development, height along Mateo and massing of the building adjacent to ours. The taller structure they placed further to the east and will be a gateway to the arts district from Boyle Heights without impinging greatly on the Palmetto Mateo intersection. We own a portion of the former railway separating our properties and are so impressed with their plans to develop a Paseo that we have begun discussions collaborating on a joint development. We strongly support Carmel Partners. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, that concludes our public comment. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, well I certainly wanna uh, thank um, the investment that's been made in the Arts District. I, 
believe that the Arts District is probably one of the most exciting and interesting areas in all of the city of Los Angeles. As we struggle to uh, build and uh, make it a, uh, a place where people uh, visit more, or live, or work, uh, certainly uh, that demand on the neighborhood, we've attempted to keep the character of the neighborhood as well, which is one based in the arts and the kind of industrial feel which makes it a unique neighborhood. Uh, as I've watched this project progress, I think the um, people who have brought this to us um, have, uh, the applicant has attempted to do that and they build strong relationships with the local community. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, certainly this is a community that is active and people are uh, watching how it, um, how it uh, pr progresses. progresses. Uh, bringing forward the um, affordable component for artists and local businesses in the commercial space is much needed uh, because there is a need in the area, I believe, for gathering space, for places where people can um, visit and uh, feel like uh, it continues the artistic uh, history of the area. So thank you for that as well. Um, with that, I'd like to um, move to deny the three appeals and thereby sustain the City Planning Commission's determination in approving the project with the following amendments. One, amend the conditions of approval consistent with the changes requested by the applicant in their letter dated October 10th, 2018. That's the Rosenheim and Associates letter. The, two, uh, the applicant shall implement an affirmative marketing plan for artists and local businesses that will include the designation of an identified outreach coordinator whose primary function will be to coordinate with one or more local nonprofit organizations for the purposes of establishing and maintaining the affirmative marketing program as part of the leasing operations for the project. The plan shall be submitted to the city for approval prior to the start of leasing. Three, require that the applicant provide $2.25 million to the CD14 Public Benefit Trust Fund, a minimum of 500,000 of which shall be paid no later than 60 days following the end of the entitlement's appeal period. And lastly, planning amend the conditions of approval and findings such that they are consistent with those amended by this committee and adopted by council. Any questions or comments? You got all that, Mr. Mejia? Um, also, to adopt the EIR, the statement of overriding considerations, the mitigation monitoring program, and the CEQA findings, Councilman. It will incorporate that into the motion. Any objections to the motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. Next item, Mr. Mejia. But that concludes the agenda, Councilman. Okay, I think we have public comment remaining. Any public comment? General public comment. Yes, we do. It's not coming up on my screen. Oh, there it is. Heidi Feldstein and Suzanne Roca. Good afternoon, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to address you. I feel a little bit like a canary in a coal mine. I'm here to ask this committee to please agendize and show leadership in connection with the parallel planning processes that are converging on the Wilshire Community Plan. The Wilshire Plan is not scheduled for general amendment until 2021. Before that time, we have a number of planning processes, including the Purple Line Extension, the Northern Crenshaw Extension, and all kinds of other matters that are affecting the density and the composition of our neighborhood. We would ask, please, that the development in this neighborhood be taken with the same degree of care as was shown in the project that was just before you, and that any upzoning take place in the context of open space, of community planning, of security and safety and city services for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Susan Roca. Uh, I live in CD1. My name is Susan Rocha. I have a noise problem because the city allows Divine Savior Catholic Church to blast their tape recorder off key tape recordings into my house 10 times every day. This is not a part of planning. There's, an, there's no EIR required for them to install four loudspeakers and blast no, church music or God bless America, whatever else they feel like blasting into my home. No EIR required, no building permit required. I've suffered for many years. I've been a city council. I've been to every public meeting you can imagine. This is not okay. 
it's not okay for, for you to force your religion into my home. And noise, noise. Um, several times a day, even though there's no church services going on, there's not a soul around. It's just on automatic computer dial. But no, we want this, and they don't give it down. So this church took me to court twice to shut me up, and twice they've lost. This is really sick that you don't put some teeth into the law, and you. uh, you'll let the city attorney twist the code to say they could do whatever they want whenever they feel like Thank it. Thank you. Fix the Thank code you very much. and read the law because it is illegal. Thank you very much. Any item, any other business before this committee? No, Councilor. Thank you. This uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.